My name is Stanislaw Robert Liberto with AV Ultra, and today we're going to take a look at the 3D grid replicator in Element 3D. So what you can see on my screen right now is I have a series of these different phones kind of floating in space, and all of this was made with just two different models here. So one is an iPhone 5 model, and the other one is a Galaxy S3, and then one is just uh, white, and the other one is, is black on those S3s. You can probably notice there's a lot going on in the scene here. I've got a lot of camera movements, we've got some really nice depth of field, and I've got this background that really kind of fills out my scene here. All right, so let's go ahead and get started and talk about the point replicator here. So let's go ahead and get started. I have just a blank composition here. I already have some light set up for later on, but I just have a solid on here that I'm gonna place my element layer onto, and we're gonna go right into our scene setup. This is pretty much exactly the way we've done things every other time, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come down here. I've got this iPhone uh, 5 here, and I'm just going to drop that into my scene. And I'm also going to come up to my Galaxy S3. And I'm going to drop in, let's drop in this white one and this black one. All right, so obviously you can see right now we have our group folder. And we have all these different objects in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of these and actually pull them out of this group folder. And I'm just going to get rid of that group folder. The reason is... Uh, I want each one of these to be part of my replication engine. So if I have just that group folder, it's only going to show me whatever one I see there. But because I have all three of these, the particle replicator will go through one, two, three, and then repeat or mirror however I want that set up. So I'm just going to hit OK. And right now, we currently just see the one phone, right? So I'm in my group one here. And we're going to go to our particle replicator. And let's turn off some of these lights for right now. All right, so that we can see our phone a little bit more clearer. And what I'm going to do right away is let's just rotate this so we can see this a little bit better here. Change that to 180. So we're looking right at our phone here. And I'm going to change this from our point replicator to our 3D grid. And right away, you can see some stuff happening here. So I'm just going to drop a camera into my scene here, just so I can pan around here. Uh, with putting in a camera layer, even though that element isn't technically a 3D layer here, it has its own 3D space. So I can actually pan around this. Right? And right now, it's a big mess. Uh, and that's OK. So I'm going to go back into my element layer here. And we have our 3D grid. So by default, it wants to go three by three by three. So if I just change this to one by one by one, obviously we're only seeing one thing here. But if I change this to, let's say, I want this to be five deep and three, row, uh, three columns tall, now we've got that. And now there's currently only one being replicated on the Z axis. Underneath our 3D grid, we have our position x, y. So that's our point that it's replicating from. And then we have the scale shape. What the scale shape refers to is how far away these are from each other. All right. So now you can kind of see what's going on here. In fact, if I let's change this back to 2 by 2. All right. And I'm going to scale this back down. So 2 by 2, how many am I going to get? Well, 4 because 2 by 2. See, see what happened there? There's 2 on the x and then 2 on the y. But if I change this to, say, 4, now I have 4 on the x and 2 on the y. And because this is a 3D grid, we can actually do in the z-axis. So now there's actually two layers of this 4 by 2 by 2. All right. Now you'll notice that it's replicating them in a specific order. So we have our uh, our replication happening. I've got an iPhone, iPhone, and then Galaxy, another Galaxy, and so on. We can actually change the way that that replicator is replicating. 
So I can come down here to this random seed and that's just going to randomly change it here. As I'm changing this, it's just changing the index number for it. And if I don't want the iPhone in there, right? So I, I just want the two galaxies, right? I'm just gonna remove that iPhone. And now they're all just going to be black and white galaxies. So that's pretty awesome. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna put that back in for our purpose of argument here. And let's go ahead and grab that iPhone. Drag that in there. And I'm just gonna flip this guy around just so that way that they're all facing the same direction. All right, so I've just moved the orientation to zero, zero, zero. And that way they're all facing the back. Okay, great. I'll hit okay. And now we have our iPhones and our Samsung Galaxies in there. I can increase the shape size of this and what this will do is kind of pull them further apart, right? And I can just pull them apart on a specific scale. So right now I'm working with just the X and now this would be just the Y. And if I want them pulled apart further in the Z, well, you guessed it, we're gonna have more rows of that. Now I can get really kind of crazy with this. In fact, we can pump this up to let's say 10 by 10 by 10. And right now it's a big mess because it's being replicated all these different times. And so I'm gonna to have to scale up this shape quite significantly to pull them apart enough so that way we can see them. I'm just going to pan around my scene here. And if I zoom this out, all right, so I'm just going to zoom this out. You can see how many we've created here. So things can get really big, really, really fast. Now, I don't want that many, so I'm just gonna change this by five by five by five. And I'll scale that shape down, pull them a little bit closer together. I still have quite a lot of these. So if I pull back, you can still see we have quite a lot of them here. And this is why we can specify, well, you know, maybe I just need a row of them I, and I need them to go so far deep, but I don't really need that many on the Y axis. So maybe I just need something like that. I want them to be a little closer together as far as these different rows. All right, so there we go. Now, the other thing I did before was I had that awesome kind of background in there. And this is one really cool thing about Element is you can have these different environment maps. If I go to my presets here, I've got some environments in here and you should have at least the basic. Uh, I also have my backlight in here. And I'm just gonna pick this one here. And what this does is if you can see the reflection that's happening on this. So you can see this little purple line right here, right? That is actually how what is being reflected on this screen, right? And if I change this to say this one here, it creates a different kind of look, right? So this is the room or the environment that this 3D model is sitting in. And how can I really see that a little bit more clearly? Well, I'm gonna turn on my environment map here. And now I can see this room, so to speak, right? And I'm gonna just change that back to that other one there because I really like this one in here. Look, we've got some nice lights and it's giving some really nice, cool blue colors in there. And I'm gonna hit okay. And now you can see how that's changed our scene here. I have a series of lights I'm just gonna turn on in here real quick. And it looks like I have a couple that are just a little too bright. There we go. Let's get rid of this other one. And so that's just in our 3D grid replicator. I'm just gonna close my group one right now. And I'm gonna come back down here to our render settings. Now we're gonna be going into this much deeper in other lessons, but the only one I care about right now is this physical environment. And we have a show in background. And if I click this here, that's actually going to show that same environment map that I just had before, right? And 
going even further with this, so if I just get in here, let's uh, zoom in on these phones. We can actually rotate this environment. So if we want to get a different kind of reflection here, right? So maybe if I want some highlights right on here, I can do that. Or I can rotate this around here to kind of give myself a little bit more depth. Now, the only other thing I did is I'm going to go back into my group one here. I'm going to go under my shape options here. So my shape options give me my particle order. So notice if I pick forward, it's going to actually put it in order. It's going to go uh, model one, model two, model three, and then start back up again at one. So if I have a, a list of say 20 different objects and I want them to be in that specific order, that's one way I can do it. Otherwise, we can go backwards or mirror it. So it's going to go one, two, three, three, two, one, one, two, three. I like to typically leave it at random, and that's where I can change that random seed, and it's just going to change which models appear where in our replicator. One other thing I want to do here is I want to go under our particle look, and we didn't go too deep with this yet, but I can change the size of the individual particles, right, because each one of these is a particle, and I can rotate our particle. So if I go under our particle rotation, I can change the randomize and just rotate each of these randomly. All right, so that's how I was able to kind of get that one look where they're all kind of rotating randomly in our scene here. All right, so I like something like that. Now that I've got that on my scene here, it doesn't look that great. If I change this to full, we're going to get a little bit more clearer in here, but to really get a little bit more realism out of this, uh, there's typically some depth of field. You see that all the time in different commercials where something will be in focus right here. Let's say this particular phone is going to be in focus and the rest of them aren't. Or as I pass through them, anything that's gonna be say in this physical space is going to be in focus. So I'm gonna open up my camera. I'm just gonna hit AA so I hit the letter A twice. I'm going to turn on my depth of field. And as soon as I turn that on, I have some different options. I have my focus distance and my aperture. The higher this aperture is, the shallower depth of field I'm going to have. And depending where my focus distance is, that's going to specify what's in focus. I'm just going to change this to my camera one here for so I'm going to pull back this focus distance say something like that and for our purposes right now I'll just put this on quarter resolution all right so I've got my focus distance and I've got my rest kind of blurred out here but that's a little too much so I'm just gonna dial that back maybe down to let's say 40 something all right, so now if I take my camera through my scene, you'll notice that this is blurred out and now this is getting more in focus. And I can kind of pass through each of these into my scene. And let me just make a keyframe for that really quick. So I'm just gonna pull this back. Let's say, let's start it right there. And just going to open up my position transformation and we'll just take it like five seconds and I'm just going to pull this forward here all right and we'll play that back see what that looks like while that's playing back it'd be great if I can also have these phones rotate and create a little bit more movement so that's exactly what I'm going to do here I'm back in my element layer and I'm going to go down to my particle look in my group one and here I can just change that rotation right so maybe I want this rotating a little bit so let me just pause this and I'll start back here at the beginning and I'll undo those start back at the beginning and let's randomize our Y so I'm just going to set a keyframe and then go about three or four seconds here. 
and rotate this guy. And we'll rotate it that way so it kind of opens a path for us, right? And so now, as I'm kind of panning through our scene here, we also have our phones moving, right? So they're all rotating a little bit here. All right, so that is the basics of the 3D grid. Um, I hope you found this useful. If you're looking for more Element 3D tutorials or other tutorials in After Effects, Final Cut, Premiere, or uh, pretty much anything else to do with video, you can find them at my website, www.stanislawrobertliberta.com. And there I offer tons of different classes. So if you're looking for specific face-to-face -face training, I've got that. I'm really excited to be starting to build some online courses that people can buy and download. And in the meantime, I'm putting together a bunch of these free tutorials for you guys. My name is Stanislaw Robert Liberto with AV Ultra. Hopefully you found this useful.